Evaluate the line integral in Stokes' theorem to find the surface integral of Stokes' theorem. Assume that the vector normal to the surface is in the positive z direction. And we're given the vector field f with components x, y, z. And we have that s is the upper half of the ellipsoid, x squared by 9 plus y squared by 16 plus z squared equals 1. So what are we trying to do here? Well, we're trying to evaluate the double integral of Stokes' theorem, but not using this double integral, we instead want to use the line integral. So that's the line integral over our closed curve C of the vector field dotted with that differential d vector r. And if we're using this line integral, we'll keep in mind that we'll want to convert this to the parameterized vector field dotted with the tangent vector dt. So we want to use a vector line integral here to evaluate the surface integral. So we need to find a parametric description of our ellipsoid. And since we are using the vector line integral, we need a one parameter description. So we're just using that arbitrary parameter t. So in this case, I think it's going to be most helpful to start by recalling what is the parametric description of an ellipse in R2. So we know that if we have an ellipse in R2, this would be defined in Cartesian coordinates by x squared by a squared plus y squared by b squared is equal to 1. And this is, of course, such that a and b are scalars. There are real numbers, are constant values. And so we think, okay, well, what is this map to in terms of an arbitrary parameter t? What is that parameterization? So the x component of your ellipse in R2 is x of t, which is defined as a multiplied by cosine of t. The parameterized y component is defined as b times sine of t. And this is such that t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. Now, keep in mind here, we have a vector field in R3. And we're also trying to parameterize an ellipse. So there's still that z component. But since s is the upper half of the ellipsoid, this is also letting us know that z is greater than or equal to 0. And again, since we're talking about an ellipse in the xy plane, what is going to be the z component in the xy plane? 0. So we can say that our z of t is 0. So we can use this now to parameterize our ellipsoid. So again, we are given the surface here, and I'm going to rewrite this as x squared over 9, or we can say 3 squared, plus y squared over 16, or 4 squared, plus z squared over 1 is equal to 1. And this is such that z is greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, the parametric description of the ellipsoid, so we have the components, the parameterized components, x of t, y of t, z of t, will be defined here as 3 cosine of t, 4 sine of t, and then our z component is 0. And again, this is such that t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. So looking at these bounds, we've got a closed curve. And keeping that last example in mind, as well as the fundamental theorem of line integrals, it's going to be beneficial in this case to just double check 
to see if your vector field is conservative. So before we go any further than this, let's check what's going on with our vector field. We want to check if the vector field is conservative. This will provide us with a awesome shortcut. Remember that the fundamental theorem of line integrals tells us that if we're evaluating a vector line integral over a closed curve, which we are, and if that vector field is conservative, then the vector line integral is zero. So here we go, let's check. So we have this vector field F defined by the components F, G, H, which are given to us as X, Y, Z. Let's go ahead and find all those partial derivatives. So we have F equals X, our G component is defined as Y, and the H component is defined as Z. So we need the partial derivative of F with respect to Y, as well as the partial derivative of F with respect to Z, which are both zero in this case. We need to find the partial derivative of G with respect to X and the partial derivative of G with respect to Z, which are also both equal to zero. And we need the partial derivative of H with respect to Y and the partial derivative of H with respect to X, which are both also zero. Woohoo! So we can say that therefore, since the partial derivative of F with respect to Y equals the partial derivative of G with respect to X, they're both zero. Since the partial derivative of F with respect to Z is equal to the partial derivative of H with respect to X, which is also zero, and since the partial derivative of G with respect to Z is equal to the partial derivative of H with respect to Y is equal to zero, the vector field F is conservative. Right, remember, this means that our vector field F can be written as the gradient of the potential function phi. So we don't need any further calculations. We're able to make the final conclusions right here. We can say, therefore, by the fundamental theorem of line integrals, since C is a closed simple curve, and since our vector field is conservative, then the vector line integral over this closed curve C of the conservative vector field dotted with the differential d vector r is zero. So by Stokes' theorem, the double integral over the surface Fs of the curl of the vector field dotted with the vector normal to the surface with respect to the surface is also equal to zero. And so this is our beautiful final answer. So here we really didn't even need to parameterize the surface to start. It was just for good practice. So this is a demonstration why it's always convenient or important to check is your vector field conservative.